Welcome back. In this video, we're going to be getting our player moving. We're going to take this from mock-up to actual thing you can interact with. So that's going to be exciting. So what I like to do is put our player controls in another tab here. So I'll just say dash dash player controls. Let's just say a player movement. And something I've gotten in the habit of doing is actually kind of nesting functions in from these other tabs just in this first tab. So the first tab would be kind of the master controller of everything. And then the second tab is going to be where you actually specify all the code. OK, so for instance, we're going to say like I PLR. This is a custom function for initialize player. We're going to do the same thing for you PLR for update player. And I can really see what's being called for init, update and draw right here on this page. And then if I want a little bit more details on things, I can go to the U player function, which I'm going to define here in the player movement. So function I player is going to be something function U player is going to be something and function D player is going to be something too. The first thing let's do is actually draw our sprite SPR. What sprite number are we working with here? We are working with sprite 10. OK, so sprite 10. And we're going to draw it. Let's just draw it in the middle of the screen. OK, 63 comma 63. That's the X and Y values there. And the one thing I'm going to do is go to my map. And here where we have our player mocked up, I'm just going to get rid of that just by getting rid of those two tiles like this. Save run. Now we have our player right there in the middle of our map. And that's an actual sprite, not just part of our map. Now, because that's an actual sprite, we can control him with variables. So let's set up our variables. What I like to do is set up a player in a table. So uh, PLR equals two curly brackets like this. And then we can just put the properties of our player here in this table. So uh, X equals 63 comma Y equals 63. And it's really important to have a comma after the first one, but the last one doesn't get a comma. Don't put a comma in the last variable in your table. All right, so now we have these variables, which we can get to by player.x and player.y. So instead of x here, we'll just say player x and player y. Now we could also specify a sprite here if we wanted to animate the sprite, but we're not even going to animate the sprite, so we'll just keep it really simple. Save run. Now he's still in the same place. That's good. But it's using these numbers here. Now for our update player, we can change these variables, which is going to animate our player. So we do that with an if statement. So if button, what button? Shift R for right button, then player.x plus equals one. And then we'll end that if. And we'll just label that with a comment. Because once we start getting a bunch of ifs in here, we're going to wonder why there's 15 different ends, right? So if we press the right button on the update function, it's going to add one to player.x. After the first frame, this is going to be 64, and then 65, 66, right? So if I hit save and run, and now I hold the right button on the keyboard, he moves to the right. Hey, we're doing it. OK, so we just got to figure out the other directions here. And so we'll say else if button shift L for left emoji, then player.x minus equals 1, OK? And we'll just add those emojis there on that thing. There we go. And then we're going to basically just copy and paste this for the up and down movement. There's other ways to do movement here uh, that some people prefer to not have these be exclusive, but um, I don't think it's that big a deal. So player.y minus equals one. This is going to be player.y plus equals one for down. OK, now let's see if this works. Save run left, right, up, down. Yeah, now we have that green in that sprite, so we don't want that. Let's go back here to our sprite here and let's just replace this with black, which is going to be transparent by default. And now save run. Now we have our little robot guy moving around. <laughs> yeah, buddy. That's so awesome. OK, so we have our player movement happening. This is awesome. So yeah, short one today. But if you're following along, get your player moving with the kind of if statements like this. That's all for today. By the way, if you're new to Pico 8, we have a free Pico 8 Essentials Workshop available right here. And if you want to watch all the videos in this series, there's a playlist right here. See you next time.